Well, a new documentary is expected to show the woman at the center of the Roe versus Wade Supreme Court decision legalizing abortion was paid by pro-life groups to say things that she did not believe in opposition to abortion. Norma McCorvey's revelation made just months before her death in 2017 is featured in an FX documentary airing Friday. McCorvey was for a time an advocate for pro-abortion causes, but then had a conversion to Protestant Christianity campaign against abortion and in 1998 became Catholic. Catherine Hadro, host of EWTN Pro-Life Weekly, joins me now to talk more about this. Catherine, welcome back. Good to have you on the show. It's good to be here. Thanks, Tracy. Well, Catherine, as you well know, this is getting a lot of attention. What's your reaction? Well, this is really difficult to navigate, Tracy, because A, None of us have seen this documentary yet. It airs on Friday, like you said. And B, there are a lot of us who didn't have a close personal relationship with Norma McCorvey. So that's why I find it disturbing that this documentary, centered on one woman, which makes this bombshell claim, is released after her death. Because right now, we can't turn to Norma and ask her, hey, is this accurate? Is this an accurate portrayal? Is there any additional context or information that we should know about? We can't turn to her and ask her that. But I will say this, Tracy, I hope that people who are learning about Norma McCorvey for the first time because of this news story learn that the Jane Roe and Roe v. Wade never got an abortion. Catherine, what has the broader pro-life response been to this? There's a lot of buzz and there continues to be a great outpour. I'm seeing that on social media and in my inbox, pro-life leader after pro-life leader saying this depiction of Norma just doesn't match up with the Norma McCorvey that I knew. So many pro-life leaders said they had a personal relationship with her. They prayed with her. They wept with her. They knew her up until her death, which does beg the question, was she in any way manipulated or taken advantage of towards the vulnerable end of her life? But again, we cannot get full clarity on that right now because Norma McCorvey is no longer here with us. And um, I also have noticed a lot of pro-abortion advocates, sorry, I think are using this as an opportunity to try to entice and draw pro-lifers into somewhat of a battle over Norma McCorvey's legacy. And I would just say, let's rise above that and speak to the truth of what we do know about Norma. Yeah, and Norma's life, as you know, was filled with a lot of pain. What are we to make of this, even the timing of it, you know, three years after her death, Catherine? Well, I think that's what also makes this such a difficult discussion, Tracy, is the fact that Norma led a very difficult life. You know, she said when she was alive that she was sexually abused as a child. Uh, she got married at the age of 16, ended up leaving her husband, dealt with substance abuse, and then with her third pregnancy was thrust into this Roe v. Wade case. Norma McCorvey suffered a lot. So I just pray that this documentary, that this news story is a reminder to us all that we all should be praying for Norma. You know, that's a responsibility that doesn't end with her death. If anything, it really increases with her death. Let's pray that those wounds that she experienced, that she is now healed. Um, and the bottom line is, is this, Tracy, uh, the pro-life movement does not hinge on one person and what they may or may not have said. It does not hinge on an FX documentary. Uh, the pro-life movement is based on the reality that there is unique human DNA at the moment of conception. And we as Catholics know that that's a life already worth defending because it's made in the image and likeness of God. And that's a truth that no documentary can take away. Well, Catherine, thanks so much for coming on and sharing your insight with us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Tracy.